Let's restart it. All right. So we are back. We got done talking some uh, ACC football, Clemson, Clemson and DeMonte Capehart. DeMonte Capehart, he had his criminal record expunged. He was riding around with a gun on campus and recklessly. So hopefully he'll learn from that situation. Uh, it's just a weird scenario that you would even have a gun on campus. But like I said, not going to come down on the young man. We all make mistakes. I hope he grows from that. Also, uh, talking some SEC football, where Florida is just going to go Florida. Billy Napier is just going to be Billy Napier. Um, third year, crucial year. He's 11 and 14 in his tenure at Gainesville. And you think he'd whip out the big guns? Think again. He went out and got Dan Enos, a dude who got fired out of Arkansas after a two and six start. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> the good people of Gainesville, you've got to be mad at that. Then we talked about Trey McNutt out of Ohio State. He's the number one high school football player out of Ohio. He is suspended for the one game of his senior season because he played in a seven on seven tournament. He voiced his discontent with the Ohio High School Athletic Association's rules pertaining to football the windows when you can and can't play certain types of football or any football at all. So it has been a busy day. Now we're going to go out to the Mountain West. We want to talk about a prodigal son coming home in Dirk Cutter. Dirk Cutter is going back to Boise State. Uh, he spent 14 years in the NFL, including three seasons as the head coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He made his professional coaching debut in 2007 as the offensive coordinator for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, that's when he got fired from Arizona State. So you see the dramatic turn that's been. And he found immediate success setting franchise records for total points scored and yards gained while helping the Jags to an 11-5 record in five seasons with the Jaguars. The team accumulatively ranked third in the NFL in rushing yards. So this is the guy that they get back in the Mountain West. In Boise, Bronco Nation. Bronco Nation is pumped up about having a prodigal son return, somebody who gets him, somebody who's been there. Now, there's been some time that that's passed, obviously. However, I think that what he brings to the table what Coder brings to the table, he can turn this thing around. He can get the national picture talking again about the Mountain West. In 2012, Coder became the offensive coordinator of the Atlanta Falcons. Beginning a three-year stint in Georgia, capital city, his guidance immediately had an impact on the Falcons. They finished 12th that season in a league best of 13-3 and three, and the number one seed in the NFC. They would advance their first NFC Championship game appearance in eight years and third appearance overall. So you can quickly see that Boise is looking to go ahead and make some noise in the Mountain West. Not only in the Mountain West, but they're going to make some noise in the landscape of college football. And we'll look at Boise's, we'll look at the schedule coming up after we get back from a quick 20 from an unofficial sponsor of the show this is big burn at app stupid Subway, eat fresh, refresh, eat fresh. Try any of the new signature series Subway subs. Download the app, order online, visit the good folks down at your local Subway. You can even try the sidekicks, the footlong cookie, footlong churro, or the footlong pretzel. Subway, eat fresh, refresh. Okay, so looking at Boise schedule, they have on August the 31st, Georgia Southern. They should win that game uh, September the 7th. They're going to get killed. They play Oregon. 
and then they play Portland State. They should win that one. Uh, Washington State may be a tough one. Utah State, uh, they should win that one. Hawaii at Hawaii. So, yeah, uh, go enjoy Hawaii, fellas. (laughs) Hawaii in October, amazing weather. Then they come back off the bye, UNLV, San Diego State, Nevada, San Jose State, Wyoming, and then they fit, well, they fizzle out at the end of the year against Oregon State. So you know, most of these games, if I had to go ahead and look at a team that could go ahead and beat them, I would say definite losses are Oregon and Oregon State. I would say you would probably take a loss to San Diego State, and that's it. So if those are the three games that you're going to lose and Dirk is right back calling the plays and dialing up stuff, I think Boise could make some noise. Now, would they enter into a college game playoff? I don't think so. I don't think that they would make the college playoffs. Uh, Right now, the SEC and the Big Ten are lobbying the NCAA for first-round buys for their teams if they get in, if this goes to an eight-player format, and why not? But I don't think that looking at this strength of schedule, the only teams, your one out-of-conference game is Oregon. You're not going to beat Oregon. And then you look at signature wins within the conference wyoming's not a powerhouse san San jose state's not a powerhouse nevada same thing san diego unlv i don't even think unlv's they ever had a program when you look at these places portland state washington state utah none of these on this schedule is strong enough to overcome the softest acc schedule And this is the Mountain West. The softest SEC schedule. This doesn't come close. Big Ten doesn't come close. So, they could be a team that they go 11-2 and and not get a look. Then all they did was play the teams that you put on the schedule. But looking what Coder brings, all the experience from the NFL on this level, they could be a quiet juggernaut. So that's our show. I love everybody. Thanks for rocking with us. This is-